Hi there again, I'm back in the radio shack, up to no good. I'm actually going to try out this new interface that a friend of mine's installed across the pond, Pat. He works over at Ham Radio Outlet, uh, Portland, Oregon. So yeah, we're big friends and he, he sends me things occasionally to try out. And uh, this time around I've got access to the remote uh, LAN network adapter from Yesu, the SCU10 LAN. And uh, we're going to have a quick look and see what it works like. So it's actually installed, it's installed at his end. Uh, he's got it connected to his Yesu FTDX10. And uh, it basically means that I can use my computer and internet to connect to it and uh, see what's going on over in Oregon, in Portland, Oregon. So yeah, hi to the HRO crew and thanks for uh, letting me try out this network uh, uh, connection to Pat's radio. I'm going to see what it works like. So right now I've got my Yesu switched on. This radio obviously can be connected to one of these interface units which are created to give you the access via the internet remotely and use your radio with the matching software on a laptop or computer screen. So Pat's kindly uh, sent me the information to connect to his network uh, LAN adapter, the SCU10, and uh, we're going to give it a go in a second. So he's using the FTDX10, and uh, this is the FTDX101MP. So I'm just going to turn the radio down, which uh, is the plug into the antenna. So the radio interface opens up, uh, it looks pretty much like any typical uh, Yesu screen on one of these modern transceivers. So first thing I'm going to do is boot it up. So it's quite funny because uh, Pat said that he was in his QTH and with his, uh, his XYL and the radio came on and obviously it was me uh, remotely switching it on from my location here in England. So right now I'm going to connect it over to Portland. Obviously. There's a lot of people been operating remote for years, so this is nothing new. I'm just giving you a quick overview of uh, what it's like as a first time operator, kind of connecting to a, a station in Oregon. I'll be just listening rather than uh, transmitting because uh, I'd have to use the correct call sign to identify where we're operating from. So right now we're just going to operate as a listener. So I'll power up the radio and uh, hopefully that'll send the signal and bring the radio on. Uh, I was listening on 20 meters last time, so it saved the frequency. Uh, let's just have a quick listen to the quality. So that's coming through my computer speakers. So yeah, I'm pretty much controlling Pat's radio. Yeah, yeah, if I wanted to transmit, I'd hit the PTT switch. So I'm just going to uh, show you the, the, the filter off. I'll bring down the um, the amp. Put the IPO in. So that did put the noise, put the amp back on. And a bit of noise blanker. So yeah, so we've got some fairly weak reception, not much of a signal looking up at the S meter. But we're receiving signals at S3 at Pat's QTH. So let's just move up the band a little bit. I'll move down the band, move up the band. Hey, 
out here to uh, you know, I play, play, play on the clock. So we'll uh, catch up with y'all later. Bob uh, gets to make the one. I'm sure I've been robbing it for a while here. And we'll uh, catch you tomorrow probably. See you inside. Here it is. So Pat's radio is working okay, I'm not sure, I think he's got a wire antenna up, possibly a vertical. Let's just uh, change frequency, see if we can pick anybody else up. So yeah, operating in Portland, Oregon, from Yorkshire, England, near Bradford, remotely. And um, yeah, like I say, this is nothing new. But it's quite cool how it works. And um, seems to be working quite easy with a decent internet connection. Obviously, um, it's whether you need this kind of setup. But I suppose if you're going away a lot, it's very good. Well, the strange thing is I can hear this guy on my end. So I'm just going to let you listen to it live on my radio now. He's in Spain. I'm going to bring in the radio and let you listen to a time lapse via the remote station. So that's my radio, there's definitely some Aurora on his signal and that's him coming through in Oregon. I'm on my radio with the antenna. So we know he's definitely making it in Oregon because we can hear him on the other radio. I'll just bring the volume on from Oregon. So that's Oregon and this is England. Beaming towards Oregon. So that's the situation with the um, remote station. Quite useful, obviously, for checking whether your signal's reaching to Oregon in this situation. And we can hear that he's certainly getting over there, no problem. That's the signal from Oregon. So yeah, pretty successful. So yeah, I'm actually hearing stations from Oregon side now, or California coming through on the frequency at my end I've switched um, the remote station off disconnected and I'm back on my base station so we'll just see if we can pick up the guy so yeah that's the remote interface the SCU 10 LAN interface from Yesu and uh, like I said Pat over in Oregon has got it connected to his FTDX 10 which I was connected to then listening to this guy from Spain coming through in Oregon and I can hear him obviously here in England, but interesting to see if we can hear Oregon or Portland or California. Not hearing much at all. I did hear a station call a few seconds ago, so poss possibly a bit of QSB. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, what do you think of this interface stuff? I'll take another look at it anyway. So I think it's fairly cool, I like it. Have I got use for it? Well, I'm not sure if it's the kind of thing I need, 
um, because obviously I'm mobile with HF I've got my shark but if I was working away a laptop and that can software which is really good to use I'm impressed with the software uh, that works really well so yeah I could connect to this radio with one of those interfaces something I may think about um, but yeah fantastic uh, that Pat's allowed us to try it uh, and uh, thank you very much I'll just turn the volume down on that definitely Aurora coming in on this guy's signal Lou from Barcelona as they are in many other signals kind of making the audio warbly that's when the Aurora uh, changes the sound of the audio it also makes conditions very unstable but going back to the interface I'd definitely consider getting one the advantages I, I suppose I could imagine if you did have a, this radio for example connected to one uh, people uh, without an antenna system obviously can easily access it and uh, do a bit of DXing so that's the great thing about that it can be made available to other uh, radio amateurs without the uh, means of having a station obviously we all heard about these sort of things from others that are into it so that's a possibility I suppose from a personal point of view um, I can't see me really needing to do that because I'm like I say I'm mobile HF and I'm also uh, active from the shark at home so when I go out portable I like to work portable but very good if you're a business person traveling and obviously you could connect mobile with a laptop to your station whilst driving with a good internet connection so amazing technology I like to look at different stuff not making any contacts obviously don't want to be transmitting until uh, I, I, I use the correct call which I would imagine would be uh, starting with the, the, the regional locator at stateside my call and possibly a zone number uh, I'll have to look into that for any further tests that I might, may carry out with Pat's permission so thanks very much Pat and the HRO boys in Portland, Oregon. Catch up with you soon. And, uh, easy enough to operate from this side. And uh, a great thing to buy. And reasonable price as well for what you're getting. If that's your cup of tea. Thanks very much. 73.